Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White, I'm an employment attorney, and on this channel we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. Today though, I'm answering a question from a family friend. Um, this married couple approached me and they said, hey, um, our lad, our, our young high school aged boy has advised us that he does not want to go to college and he doesn't care about high school because he wants to become a Twitch streamer professionally. That is going to be his chosen career. And we want to know, Vince, is that a real job? And the reason they ask me, the reason they ask me is because I played a lot of video games as as a kid myself. I came up playing StarCraft, Warcraft, uh, Brood War. I played some Brood War in Korea. Um, I was never professional. I was never that good. But I hung out with a lot of professional players, and I grew up to know a lot of people who, listen, I know guys who started Riot Games, who created League of Legends, right? I know a lot of people at Blizzard. I, I, I know a lot of folks who um, were retired professional gamers. Uh, if you come to my birthday party, you're going to meet game designers, game creators, a lot of different art folks who, you know, who, who work in that realm, uh, esports journalists, everything, right? So they, they knew that, generally speaking, and... Um, that's why they were asking me, I guess. They also knew that, I, listen, I've worked in this realm a little bit, doing some compensation packages, some contracts. Um, it's a complex and rapidly evolving space, is what I'll say about that. So their question was like, hey, is, is being a Twitch streamer playing games online a real job? First thing out of my mouth is, well, you're not just, you can't just be a Twitch streamer anymore. You got to stream on multiple platforms or... Uh, leverage multiple platforms to build an audience. But I suspect parents, you know, friends, you might not be super clear on what your child wants to do. Um, so I got to know, does your child want to just be a streamer or does your child want to um, be an esports journalist, a content creator? Uh, is your child just looking to be a, a personality in the gaming space or does your, do your child want to be um, an actual competitive esports gamer, right? Like, in, like somebody who's paid to play games um, professionally, competitively. And they had no idea. And immediately they were like, can you tell us the difference between those things? And uh, part of me was like, well, that's a silly question. And then I realized I was being uh, an absolute asshole and that actually lots of parents and maybe some kids who are interested in this field might not really know the difference between the various paths that currently exist and, and new ones will be created. Don't, don't sleep on that. Like just because these are the paths that I know about in 2024 to make money playing games, um, doesn't mean that's going to even be true in 2025. Okay. So let's get into it. The, the peasants of the video game playing world. The peasants who get paid to play video games are game testers. And they often make minimum wage or near minimum wage. And they work at game development studios, playing games to find bugs. Um, it is a lot of long hours. Uh, you're, you're really just marking where things go wrong. And then the people who work on the game come and fix the, the issues, right? In the next, in the next patch, in the next code. That is generally speaking, not a great job. Although I certainly know people who love it and, and they like playing games for a living. <laughs> and they feel a lot of ownership for the games they work on and, and they find it compelling and uh, satisfying. So I'm not like panning game testers, um, but it's, it's uh, hard to make a living that way, right? In the same sense, like it can be hard to make a living working at Walmart. You can do it. I certainly have friends that I grew up with who do it, right? They make a living working at Walmart in the same, or, or they make a living working at, you know, game testing. I know people who do this, right? But it's it's hard and harder when you want to have kids or get married or buy a house. Like it, it gets challenging because of the compensation. The compensation is pretty light in that field. The next kind of level up is being a Twitch streamer. And 
Twitch streamer is absolutely a job. Like, we can talk about PewDiePie, who's made, I think, hundreds of millions. Ninja, who's, I think, also made hundreds of millions. Like, you can make a lot of money streaming video games live. People watch the streams, you get ad revenue, you get brand deals, endorsements, just like any other influencer. It is really just, um, I mean, it's not even always live, but it's often a live form of influencer, right? Where you're pumping out content, and what the content you're pumping out, people want to see it, so you get paid. The same way like a podcast or a TV show gets paid when they run ads. Now, part of the issue with being a streamer or becoming a streamer in 2024 is that there's a lot of really well-established streamers with big audiences that follow them from game to game. And that doesn't mean you can't break into the market, but it does mean if you want to break into the market, you're going to have to be very smart about it. It's going to be very time-consuming. So uh, it's a field where, you know, the initial land grab is over. There's no there's no more free views in streaming land for, for video game streamers. There, every view is going to come because you have a really novel personality or you're, you're doing the work to create content on multiple platforms or... You're giving people tremendous value, you know, uh, in terms of like learning the game or advancing their own play. Or, frankly, a lot of people who stream now are professional athletes in like physical athletics or because they bring big audiences. Or people who are already influencers who have big audiences from other platforms just become streamers to monetize, right? It's, it's very similar like uh, when a famous person is like, I'm a stand-up comedian now. Are they funny? Uh, usually not, right? But but they have an audience, and they're confident they can sell out a room because they're famous, so they make money, right? So listen, can you make money as a Twitch streamer? Absolutely. It's just not easy anymore, if it, if it ever was, right? Now, you can also be an esports gamer, like a professional gamer. And this essentially means, if you're doing this professionally, that someone is paying you to practice a video game in the hopes that you will win tournaments and win notoriety and move products, right? So like if you, like um, a brand, I don't know, I'll just be like Toyota could, could sponsor a team to go play, um, I don't know, Wiggly Worms. We'll just make up a game. And a lot of times what you'll see is like the sponsor, this hypothetical sponsor, Toyota, will buy a house and will move a bunch of young people, usually young people, into the house to like form a team to practice the game together. And those young people will practice 10 plus hours a day, sometimes longer. And if they're successful and they win tournaments, those people will build a brand following that can then benefit the sponsor, right? They can also win prize money in tournaments, right? Also, notably, like a lot of times when you're an esports gamer, you can transition your notoriety, your, your brand, to get Twitch views or live YouTube or Facebook Live, whatever it is, views from when you play games. And that's additional compensation. Now, the problem with being an esports gamer is, generally speaking, there's not that much room at the top. And to make any kind of money, you kind of have to be at the top of a very popular game. But I'm sure the first thing that occurs to you is if a game is very popular, there's a lot of people playing it. And if there's a lot of people playing it, you're going to find people that are very, very good at it. And that makes it very difficult to be really, really talented at a game so being a top tier esports gamer it's rarefied air and for anything below the top tier compensation is very bad like a lot of employers and sponsors will be like well we're giving you a place to live so we don't really have to pay you much and for you to be even close to competitive you need to play 10 plus hours a day so the compensation per hour for a below top tier team is generally incredibly poor in esports, like horrifically bad. 
potentially worse than the game testers if you're not doing things to monetize your streams or something like that. And sometimes the contracts don't let you. Sometimes the contracts say that the employer gets your streams or whatever it is, right? So like, devil's in the details. Now the last kind of known path to make money off video games is to be an esports journalist. And I have friends who are esports journalists who make a great, fantastic living doing this. It does require a real special depth of knowledge. It usually requires language skills to open up additional audiences, right? If you are fluent in Korean, there are certain games that you're going to have an incredible ability to bring to English-speaking audiences because a lot of the professionals in those games are Korean. They speak Korean. If you are fluent English Mandarin, that's a big, that's two big markets, right? And, and two big markets that really have a lot of folks playing games right now. So there's real value there. And you'll find that esports journalists who do have those multiple fluencies are going to make a lot more money and, and garner much, much larger audiences very rapidly. Now, you also need industry connections. If you want to be an esports journalist, okay. If you know people in gaming, if you know people who make games, if you know people who move gaming-related products, you as an esports journalist are going to be much better off. The last big downside, I guess, to all of these, is that games get old. Games fall off over time, right? Like, they're still like, listen, people still play StarCraft Brood Wars for sure. But there's a whole bunch of games. That's a rarity. There's a whole bunch of games that people don't really play that much anymore. And they certainly don't play at a professional level anymore or a level where people are watching. So whether you're a streamer, an esports journalist, or a professional gamer, you need to constantly be refamiliarizing yourself with a new game every so many years. And that means you need to be able to carry your audience to a new game or jump to a new game and develop a new audience over and over and over again every couple of years. It can be done. I know people who do it. Very challenging. Not simple. Not a simple thing to do. Much easier to sell Cheerios or whatever, right? Like it, this is not a simple, easy game to play. So... I got notes. I kind of broke all this down for them. And their take was, listen, we don't care. Can you just talk to our kid? I was like, uh, I don't really know your kid, but okay. Um, why don't you give me the link to the stream? I'll watch the stream before I talk to your kid. It wasn't pretty. Right? So I log in. Kid is playing a game that I'm like, I know a little bit about. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name the game. And also, the kid's not watching. The kid's not gonna see this. Kid doesn't know about this channel, right? And I'm giving no identifying. I'm not, I'm not up here like punching down on the kid. Like, kid's not gonna know about this. So, the kid's terrible. Kid's a complete noob. Like, doesn't understand anything about the game. Fumbling around, making bad decisions. Like, I don't think he even, like, read the tool tips in the game. So, like, I don't think he understood the math, of the choices he was making. There was no strategy, no tactics. Um, he was an active detriment to his own well-being in the game. That's fine. That's fine. You can still you can still stream and be terrible at a game. People might just like you. People might think you're funny. I, it happens, right? But it wasn't happening for him. He had about 12 concurrent viewers. In the in the world of streaming, that's basically like you're not streaming. There's there's that's not even if you multiply that by several thousand, we can talk, right? Like that you, you might have a job. You might have you might have the ability to sustain yourself. And he was throwing out a lot of misogyny in the stream, which that market does exist. Like, listen, clearly, what we do here, we're against misogyny, right? Like, it's not, 
not a good look in a variety of ways. Um, but I'm not blind. I know that in gaming, there are streamers who have these heavily misogynistic personas that sell well. Like, that that exists. But there's not very many of them. Because it's not a very big market. There's not many people in 2024 who are young enough to watch video games who are like, I just really want to see some, some misogyny with my video games. That's going to make my day. It's going to confirm my beliefs about the world, right? Like, so, this kid's on the stream. He hears, like, a female voice on the headset uh, somewhere, some somebody else in the game, and he's calling her B-I-T-C-H. He, he, you know, he's telling her to show him, you know, stuff um, rudely. Um, you know, basically catcalling on the internet. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, this kid. <sighs> okay. Um... He's very clearly not putting in the time. He's not engaging in any community building that I can find on the internet. Uh, he's not really working social channels on, a, on social networks to, to drive funnels of viewers to the stream. It doesn't appear he's creating any extraneous content. Like, no, like, guides for the game. No, like, cool clips. Like, look what I did in the game. It's so cool. It, like, whatever. Like, whatever you can do to create little little funnels around the internet that will bring people to watch you play the game. That's what you need to do. None of that exists. Um, kind of as we already mentioned, he was terrible at the game. He was not putting in the time to practice. Uh, he wasn't even really putting in the time to understand. Like, l there's games where, like, you, you might not have the fast twitch reflexes, the actions per minute, to be talented at the game, but you can have a deep and abiding understanding of the game and... and and that is a value in and of itself. And you might even still be competitive in some way. Or at least people might enjoy your theory craft of the game, right? He wasn't doing either of those things. Um, so, they were like, why don't you just come over to dinner? You can talk to our kid. I was like, ah. Why do you want me to talk to him so much? I don't understand. This is not, like, I don't know your kid. Like, well, he he says he doesn't want to go to college. I'm like, that's great. Like, listen, college is not for everybody. If he wants to get into a trade, trades are paying a lot right now. Like, there's a, I have multiple friends making multiple six figures per year in the trades. Like, fucking crushing. Dropping F-bombs. I'm not supposed to. Crushing it. Don't, he doesn't have to go to college. Like, no, no, no. He doesn't want to go to trade school. He wants to play games. He thinks he's going to do that. And he's, like, not really going to high school anymore. Like, he's going, but he's, he's goofing around. He's playing games and just, like, goofing around. So I was basically like, listen, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But your kid's a loser. Like, your kid's bottom of the barrel. Like, your kid couldn't get hired as a game tester because he's running his mouth saying disgusting things that no corporation in the world's going to let him say, right? And I'm sure he wouldn't do it in the context of, you know, his job, maybe. Except that he is pumping that out to the internet everywhere. So maybe, maybe he's not that smart. I don't really know. Um, I don't think your kid has what it takes. And that's okay. Like, listen, there's a lot of kids who play football in high school who think maybe they're going to play D1 in college. And then they don't make D1. They make D4. And they're like, you think I can still make the NFL? No. No. No one ever thought that for you. And that's okay. You had a lot of fun. And sometimes... Uh, a game or a sport can just be a game or a sport. It doesn't have to be a job. You can just enjoy it, right? And that's okay. That's enough. Um, we don't always need to make our hobbies into our jobs. I, I, I understand that we have this obsession with, like, do what you love. But if you love it, they don't have to pay you to do it, right? Unless you're really clever, in which case, good for you. Almost everybody works. Not everybody wins, right? So, like, boom, you got it. 
But that's the problem with playing games for a living. A lot of people don't feel like they have to pay you to do it. In fact, most people pay for the right to do it, right? They're buying the games. They're paying monthly fees, whatever it is. And so you got to go the extra mile if you want to work in that world. If you want to play video games as a means of supporting your existence, you've got to be exceptionally good, exceptionally clever, exceptionally personable, or really good at working algorithms in terms of getting yourself to the top of top of the pile, right? And it definitely can be done. People do it. Smart people do it all the time. But not for nothing, your kid. Well, he's not currently doing it. And if he says he's not going to go to college, and he doesn't need to work in high school, and he doesn't want to go to trade school, because he's going to play games for a living, then I think the answer, or the question you need to pose to your child is, then why aren't you doing the things? Why aren't you putting the time in? Why aren't you putting the work in? Like, why are you so lazy? Why are you so bad? Why are you such a noob? Why don't people like you? Why do you say dumb shit on the internet that makes people hate you? What? None of that's brand building. None of that's you investing in your career. It's just you being a loser, right? Um, and surprise, surprise, the parents were like, yeah, don't say that to our kid. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm, I'm telling you. Like, I don't want to say that to your kid. Um, and, and then the mother was like, actually, could you kind of say it without calling him a loser? So they had me over. We had dinner. It was a nice dinner. And then I asked, I started asking about his career aspirations and, uh, just kind of had a, had, had a very pleasant conversation. We're like, so why don't you do social? Why don't you put out game guides? How long have you been playing the game? Like, how many hours a week are you putting in? How many hours a day? How much are you sleeping? Do you think you're not sleeping enough? Maybe that's why you're not... I see you're ranked very poorly. Like, you are in the bottom 30% of players in this game. Why Why is that? Do you not sleep enough? Are you not reading about the game? To learn about the game? Like, what? what's holding you back? Why, why, why are you so bad? Oh... I watched your stream. Why are you so angry? Why do you why do you talk to women that way? Do you not want female viewers? Or like male viewers who don't hate women? Because like most of the potential viewer pool in all the world, I mean, they're gonna either be women or people who don't hate women. I don't think in 2024 that the majority of your prospective viewers hate women. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But the potential viewer pool for video games tends to go a little bit young. And, and I don't think they hate women as much as men used to. <laughs> and he just kind of stared at me. He was like, no, 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 no. There's people like this. Yeah, 12. 12 people like it. The, the 12 watching. Because you're not getting enough views to even be allowed to monetize your stream. I don't know. He wasn't a fan. I tried to be super nice, but he wasn't a fan for obvious reasons. Um, I left. The parents bought me a nice bottle of scotch. And uh, I was their henchman. I was their... Uh, their enforcer, I guess. Um, and I gotta tell you, I've been kind of ghosting his stream, like watching it. He's made some changes. They're good changes. Like, real improvements. Engaging with the viewers. A little more respectful. A little less hate. Um, he's still bad at the game. 
Like, I don't think he has the, the hand-eye coordination, the, the actions per minute to be good at the game. And, and and some of that's not trainable. Like, listen, there's just human beings who don't work that way. Like, you, to some extent, can be born with the ability to, to train into someone who can have a great vertical leap. Uh, and you can be born with that ability and never train it up, or you can not be born with that ability and try your entire life to train it up. And either way, you're not going to make it, right? But the same is true for the ability to see and respond and have the reaction time and the ability to multitask with your mind and everything that some of these games require. You can be born with it and then develop it and have it, or you can be born without it, and then no matter how much you try and develop it, I, I don't really know you're ever going to be at the professional gamer level, right? And I say that as someone who confidently was never at the professional gamer level. I never, never will be, never could have been, even in my prime. Like, I just wasn't, didn't have what it took, right? I don't think he's ever going to have that. But he's starting to understand the game. He's starting to be conversant in the math of the game, the theory of the game, the strategy. And that's something, that's progress, that's work. I'm excited for that. Also, also I hear, he's going to go look at some colleges. So, anyways, I hope this was helpful to somebody out there whose kid wants to be a professional gamer in some 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 aspect of the, of the, the world. And uh, listen, if your kid's doing the work, amazing. If they're particularly clever and particularly hardworking, they can make it happen. And I'm excited for them. I hope they enjoy it. Take care, everybody. Uh, like, subscribe, comment down below.